Hey guys, it's Eddie the Magic Monk. Welcome to another specialist math lesson for Queensland, uh, Australia. You probably learned this all over the world though. So let's start off with a simple vector problem. Find the resultant magnitude and direction of the vector sum a plus b. So there are two vectors. We want to add them together and find out uh, for the resultant vector, what is the magnitude and what is the direction? So what are these two vectors? Well, let's define them first. So let's say vector A uh, was moving towards the top right at an angle of, let's say, about 20 degrees to the horizontal. And the magnitude of vector A, let's give it, um, let's say, 10 units. So that could be uh, just a length of 10 or a speed of 10, whatever you consider the unit is. And then the vector B is moving down towards the bottom right at an angle of 80 degrees to the horizontal. Okay, so now that we have two vectors, how do we add them together? Well, it's going to look something like this, isn't it? It's going to look something like this. That's vector A. And then it's going to go down. That's vector B. Okay, and that's vector C. Which is the sum. Okay, or you can say A plus B. So, how do I get the magnitude and direction of this vector. How do I get the magnitude and direction of this vector? Well, there are a few things we need to do. Uh, but firstly, you can see we've created a triangle. We created a triangle here. So let's get some more information about this triangle. I know that vector A is 10 units long. So this <coughs> This line here, I can represent that as 10 instead of saying A. This line here, uh, vector B, I haven't said how long that is. So let's just say that is 6 units long. So I can just replace that with 6 units. And what do I know about the angles? What do I know about the angles? Well, I know that, um, let's draw a horizontal line here and a horizontal line here. Okay, I know that this angle is 20 degrees and I know that this angle is 80 degrees. Okay, now this 80 is separate to the six, obviously. Let me just fix that up a bit. So now we're going to use one of the earliest geometry rules you would have learned, and that is called the Z rule. And the Z rule is when you have a pair of parallel lines, this angle here, so you got a diagonal line, okay, this angle here must be equal to this angle here. And that's what's happening here, okay, we got parallel lines, this horizontal line is parallel to this horizontal line which means that this angle must be equal to this angle so this angle here is also 20 degrees okay so if we have one parallel line uh, sorry one straight line we got 20 degrees here 80 degrees here then this angle must be 180 because that's the sum of angles on the straight line. It must be 180 minus 80 minus 20. So this angle here, whatever that angle is, must be 180 minus 80 minus 20, which will give you 80 degrees. So let's write 80 degrees over here as well okay so we got 80 we got this uh, side that we're trying to find and we have 
the length of this side and we have the length of this side so that is actually enough for us to use the formula so which formula which formula are we going to use we're going to use the cosine rule and the cosine rule is simply this a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cosine oops that's sort of confusing here 2bc uh, let me just use a different color so you can see it better 2bc times cosine of a in capital so it's important to understand which one is which so I'm just going to label all these elements on here okay I'm going to label all of these elements so with a different color so you can see it so basically we have a b and c are the side lengths okay and the one that we're trying to find is a so don't get confused between this a and this a because that's vector a and that's length but let's call this side a and let's call this side b and let's call this side c c is six all right so we got the three sides a b and c a is the one we're trying to find b and c can just be the other two sides the capital a is the angle opposite small case a so the length is here of the side we're trying to find and the angle opposite to that this angle is capital a okay so now that we have all the things we need we can simply substitute them into the equation so we have a squared oops a squared equals b is 10 c is 6 minus 2 times b times c times cosine of 80 so cosine bracket 80 degrees okay and now we can simply type this into the calculator so make sure your calculator is on degrees mode so it says deg because we're working in degrees right now so you're just going to go 10 squared or the squared button plus um, 6 squared minus 2 times oops i forgot to substitute the values in so it should be 2 times 10 times 6 let me just fix that right now 2 times 10 times 6 times cosine of 80 degrees okay cosine of 80 degrees and just press enter and you can see the answer is 115.16.22187 now i'm not going to write all the decimal places after it but a is simply going to be the square root of all of that because you can see we have a squared not a so in order to find a we need to square root it so square root of that is 10.7314 round it to four decimal places okay so just to verify that i have this right i'm just going to show you a quick diagram in geogebra to verify it a scale diagram okay so i've done a uh, drawing in geogebra that verifies our calculation so the first vector here from this point to this point 
has a length of 9.97 it should be 10 but you know it's sort of hard to draw exacts the angle is 20 degrees and the second vector here has a angle of 80 degrees to the horizontal and a length of six right the length of this vector is six and our final line has a length of 10.7 so this is drawn to scale which matches our calculations now the only thing we need now is this angle to the horizontal here okay so we haven't finished because we just found the magnitude of our resultant vector but we still need the angle so how we get that well we need to employ another rule called the sine rule and the sine rule says that sine of an angle divided by the length equals sine of another angle divided by the length of the side opposite that angle so how do we do that to this well let's say since we're trying to find this angle um, this is the opposite side so let's write that down so the angle we're trying to find is theta or we can just say angle a and the side length is c so six divided by sine b so um, this angle we already know and this side we already know right because we found it before so we got sine of the angle which is 80 and the side length here is 10.73 okay so we just need to rearrange this equation to find out what theta is so sine theta equals sine 1 sine 80 over 10.7314 times 6 and sine theta equals all of that inverse so what is that in the calculator in brackets sine 80 divided by 10.7314 times 6 um, what's going on uh, yes we need to inverse sign that so let's write that number down first and then inverse sign it inverse sign 0 0.5506 So inverse sign that. Where is inverse sign? Mm, function inverse sign. Inverse sign the answer from the previous question. And it's 33.4. 33.4. Okay, so the um, angle 33.4 is this whole angle. But the top horizontal bit is 20. We need to take that away in order to give us the bottom horizontal bit. So that um, angle will be 33.4 minus 20, which is 13.4 degrees. So... Um, the resultant vector is going to be 13.4 degrees to the horizontal going down right that's the horizontal and um, the side length is 10.73 units and that is the resultant vector length and 
direction. Now, in order to verify that, let's check it with GeoGebra. So you can see that this angle right here is 13.43 according to GeoGebra. And it's pretty much it. Okay, thanks for watching guys. See you next time.